Hello everybody and welcome back to the NRV Outdoor YouTube channel. Um, coming to you guys today with yet another one versus one. Today these are the exact same manufacturers. These are by Rebel. They are tiny little crankbaits. We've got the Crick Hopper here. We've got the Crawfish here. Um, these are similar colors. They're a, kind of a fire tiger color you could say. A green to a chartreuse to an orange. Um, we're going to be casting these around. We're going to be comparing the two baits. The differences in the two. And uh, why you need both. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop right on in. I want to be starting off the day tossing around the crawfish here. Um, pretty iconic little bait. It's got two treble hooks, as you can see. A pretty small little lipped bill here. And uh, this bait floats as well as dives pretty well. Go ahead and get tied on. I'll show you a little bit of what it can do, its actions and uh, its abilities. And uh, we'll get started. All right, we've got our little, our little crayfish uh, tied on here. We're going to uh, make a few casts. I'm going to kind of explain a little bit about this bait, what its uh, functionalities are and what it's capable of. Traditionally speaking, you just cast this bait out, point your rod tip down, and retrieve the bait slowly. These baits produce a massive amount of vibration and water displacement underneath the water. Um, fish can sense this and feel this coming from a long ways away. You can add some split shots of the line on this particular style of bait to increase castability and increase its overall depth. Um, you can also use lighter line. The lighter of line you use casting these baits, the deeper your bait will dive. Um, with that being said though, it's important to use a pretty thick line. I would suggest six or eight, primarily because these baits do have a tendency to hang up. Um, the wiring on the hooks is very light. So if you hang up, you can most of the time retrieve your bait from the bottom just by pulling. However, if you've got a super light line, obviously you're going to break it off and lose it. Um, now, when we're talking about hang-ups, these baits are made of a material that floats. Um, if you completely stop reeling, as I've done here, while you are snagged, your bait will begin to float back to the surface, um, oftentimes releasing itself from a snag and, and, and enabling you to, to get your bait back. So keep that in mind. If you get a snag before you start jerking, simply do nothing and see if your bait will rise to the surface for you. Now, with that being said about the, the rising and the floating, when casting these baits, sometimes you can do, just as I'm doing here, a quick little reel and pause. And what happens, it'll dive down and float back to the top. A quick little reel and pause. A quick little reel and pause. And what happens is these fish will see this thing diving underneath the surface and popping back up, and they'll think that it's just a wounded crayfish that is dying and having trouble swimming, and they'll come up and get it. But outside of that, typically speaking, you just simply cast this bait out and reel it in. Pretty basic procedure. All right, guys, we haven't been able to get any kind of reaction strike up here in the slacker water. So we're gonna go ahead and move down into some current. We're gonna work this bait exactly the same. The only difference is while fishing this bait in current, we will be casting upstream and retrieving with the current. So the current will bring this bait down as it, uh, as it works its way down the creek here. So let's go ahead and get into some current. We'll make a few casts. We'll try to catch this one on here and then we'll switch up and we'll talk a little bit about the grasshopper. All right, we worked our way down here to some current. We're going to continue casting around this little rebel crawfish here. We're just going to cast it around with the current and see if we can pick one up. Ideally, when fishing current like this with these baits, all you're looking to do is just drag it right in front of the face of one have them move from the position that they're in and chase your bait. The um, stop and go technique isn't quite as good in the current um, just because your bait will kind of, I don't know, it'll lose its overall presentation if you stop reeling while you're in heavy current. There's one guys. He liked that old rebel crawfish. Now landing these fish can be kind of tricky on the rebels. These small little trebles do have a tendency to pop off. Got ourselves a beautiful fish here. And again, that was just a slow, moderate retrieve. I'm just casting it out there, retrieving it back slowly. Let's try to get down here and net this little girl without getting ourselves a face full of treble hooks. Once you've caught your fish on your rebel bait, 
it's very important to be extra special careful while removing the hooks because they are troubles and uh as i was saying earlier they have a tendency to pop off just like it just did there in the net so there we go there's our rebel fish so here's our bait and here's our fish beautiful little rainbow let's go ahead and release her we'll grab out the uh, grasshopper and we'll talk a little bit about the differences between it and the crawfish go on back girl there she goes all right let's go ahead and grab ourselves out a grasshopper all right so we've got our little rebel rebel grasshopper here tied on the first thing you'll notice is it's slightly wider and a little bit bigger overall and that's just simply it'll simply mean it's more buoyant this bait will ride along the surface a lot better to counteract that and to get a very similar depth they elongated the bill just slightly and made it just slightly wider so this bait will dig a little bit deeper than the crawl but it will also float a little bit better it'll set on the water surface and look more like a uh, a bug than the uh, crawl pincher but overall pretty pretty similar they dive about the same depth they, they, they have about the same amount of action but let's go ahead and cast this thing out here and uh, we'll make a few casts and uh, we'll talk about how its retrieve is and how much more vibration it has if any and uh, we'll go from there so we'll make ourselves a cast here exact same idea just a slow moderate retrieve where this bait's more buoyant and has a larger bill it doesn't have quite as much vibration but it still has you know enough to catch a fish for sure but one came up and chased it all the way to the bank guys the very first cast with the hopper we had one come up and chase so let's go ahead and try that again now oftentimes when fishing these hoppers you'll see guys they'll cast it out and they'll just give it tiny little jerks along the surface because this bait floats really good they'll cast it into uh, into the current and give it tiny little jerks along the surface trying to provoke a fish to come up and eat it off the surface i don't have as much success fishing it in this manner as others do primarily because i fish in areas like this lot where it's current and it's very hard to keep a bait floating above a fish long enough to get them to feed but uh we're just going to make our, our our same initial cast here we're going to do a very slow moderate retrieve and we're just going to wind it back to us no pauses no stops no jerks no anything just a very moderate slow retrieve straight back to the bank if you've made several casts to an area and you've had a couple bites um be sure that during your retrieve you uh you slow the bait down during your retrieve or sometimes speed it up in the exact same area making the exact same cast and see if there is a a uh, pattern or significance to the rate of, of of retrieve and sometimes you'll find that all it is is a speed factor you, you got to get the perfect speed for the fish to be able to chase and eat and uh you'll just simply catch more fish doing that There's one. He liked that old creek hopper. Heck yeah. All right, this little beauty popped off right in the net here. So we're just going to uh, lean her on down here and we're gonna let her go. Then I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about these two baits and uh, we'll get back after it. Take on on. All right, so in conclusion, when comparing these two baits, essentially they fish the exact same um, they run about the same depth they have about the same amount of vibration and water displacement i will say that if you want to fish on the top and uh, kind of work it along the surface go with the crook hopper and if you want to go subsurface then go with the crawfish however they can both do both so i would recommend going ahead and heading out and picking yourself up a pack 
one of each, uh, a couple different colors to try out and uh, go out and catch you some fish. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, a uh, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, see you next time, boys and girls. Tight lines.